Okay, here we are going to discuss the endochondral ossification. As the name suggests, endochondral means from within the cartilage. So this is the type of the secondary ossification where first the cartilage exists for a particular bone. So that provides the template for the bone formation. And then that uh, bone material is being filled in within that template to become a bone. So the first step is that cartilage enlarges through the appositional and interstitial growth. Chondrocytes near the center of the shaft increase greatly in size. The matrix is reduced a series of the small stars that soon becomes calcified. The enlarged chondrocytes then die and disintegrate, leaving the cavities within the cartilage. Right? So here in this diagram you see that was the cartilage and some of the cells from the central part, they were chondrocytes, they become enlarged right? and then they make spaces within the cartilage and they die. Right? So then what happens? Secondly, the blood the blood vessels in the peri uh, perichondrium they release the mesenchymal cells that move within those centers and then they differentiate into the bone forming cells which are called osteoblasts so the osteoblast starts producing the bone material right and there's those bone material start decomposing and depositing around that center part this is called the primary ossification center and finally, <clears throat> those parts become porous bones and compact bone on the edges. Right, so this is the first step in the endochondral ossification. So that happens within the diaphysis of the bone. So this way the diaphysis of the bone has been formed. But still you see there are two parts, two edges, which are the epiphysis of the bone. They are still cartilaginous, so they need to be calcified again. So this process is repeated again in the both edges, in the, this edge and this edge. So in this way, this time we will call them the secondary ossification center. So similarly, some of the cells from the epiphyseal area of that hyaline cartilage, they increase in size and then disintegrate. Then the blood vessels from the perichondrium invade within that secondary ossification center and then they release mesenchymal cells mesenchymal cells differentiate into chondroblasts. Chondroblast starts producing osteoids. Osteoids are deposited around that secondary ossification center and that ossification center enlarges in the size as the time passes and the more and more blood uh, bone material is being produced. And finally, again, the edges are become compacted by excessive deposition of the bone material. The internal part remains, the uh, remains yeah, porous right now you see that still there is a layer of that cartilage that stays with the embryo ossification center and this type of the cartilaginous plate always exists throughout the life of the animal and it is called epiphyseal growth plate remember we have discussed it quite a few times earlier so how this growth how this uh, cartilage exists within the bones to provide the developmental sites